Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Berry and I'm the Euphonium representative and co-director of the Atlanta Low Brass Academy. In today's video, we're going to be going over some practice techniques that you can utilize when approaching the GMEA All-State Band Etude 2021-2022 Concert Band Lyrical. Now, this is a relatively complicated etude in nature, so it's going to require some pre-planning before we play the horn. Let's first look at the key signature. We have two flats, B flat and E flat, meaning we're in concert B flat major. So, every day before you practice this etude, make sure you're practicing both your concert B-flat major scale, two octaves, as well as your chromatic scale. The reason being is if you look on the second half of this etude, there are lots of accidentals. So, if we practice our chromatic scale well and make sure we're getting a nice full and beautiful tone on every note in that scale, we'll be better prepared for when we get to the second half of this etude and it demands that of us. Now, the time signature. We're in 6-8, which means the 8th note gets the beat, and there are 6 8th notes per measure. Tempo and style markings are very important here. We have dotted quarter note equals 50 beats per minute. So, go ahead and set a metronome to 50 beats per minute on your stand, and if you have this option available to you on your metronome, add in the three 8th note subdivisions, so that way you're getting each 8th note subdivision within that 50 beats per minute click. That'll help you understand how those three eighth notes are subdivided evenly into the dotted quarter note. Now, this style marking is interesting and very important. Pastoral con rubato. So, pastoral in English means pastoral. And when we think pastoral, we think open lands, you know, grass, open fields, sheep grazing, very tranquil, very calm. And then con rubato, meaning with rubato. Rubato literally translates to to rob in English, and the way musicians usually interpret that is to rob time or tempo. So what we can do with that is we can push and pull the tempo throughout the etude how we please, as long as it makes musical sense and we can maintain the idea that's presented in the 6-8 feel. If you'll notice earlier in the video when I played, you'll see that I added a retard going into measure 5, I had a retard in measure 12 and a retard in measure 16. Now, you don't have to only retard, like I said, there can be moments where you speed up. And usually the moments where you speed up are either moments before or after you retard. As, again, as long as you're keeping them within the confine of that 6-8 feeling with that triplet subdivision, you're gonna be okay. Just give a nice musically engaging and interesting performance. So let's talk about the register of this etude. Like I said earlier, we need to price our B flat concert scale because our lowest note in this etude is a low B flat and our highest note is a high B flat. If you're struggling with high notes, there's a few things we need to understand before just trying to shoot them out of our horn. High notes require a slightly smaller aperture and much more air pressure and faster air in order to get a nice, brilliant, gorgeous tone up there. So, a good way to practice this is to practice your concert B flat major scale very slowly. Practice each note in whole notes, making sure you're getting a really solid, great sound on each note. As you go up and get above, you know, B flat on top of the staff, C, D, E flat, F, and so on, make sure you're increasing the air pressure so that you're getting that great sound with every single note. And when I say air pressure, I don't mean getting tight and adding physical pressure, more as a wind pressure. So if I were to demonstrate that on air, a low wind pressure for maybe our lower notes like low B flat could be when we go up the octave to that B flat that sits on top of the staff. And finally, when we get up to the highest B flat, that top B flat, that's the kind of idea we want to have when I talk about wind pressure. Everything here is staying super relaxed, but my aperture is getting a little bit smaller and the wind speed is increasing. Practice that slowly, specifically in the pickups to measure seven going into measure nine. It's really going to help you if you can slow it down and make sure you're getting a great tone on every single note up there. Now let's talk about dynamics and phrasing. We're marked at mezzo piano in the beginning, and we don't see another uh, written dynamic until measure nine where we have a piano. So take the opportunity between measure one and measure nine to employ a lot of rubato, like it's written in the top, and a lot of dynamic changes. If you go back and listen to the recording earlier in the video, I had a lot of phrasing that 
uh, you know, exemplify the downbeats and the cadential points in this moment. Uh, for instance, in the beginning. Da, da, di, da, di, da, di, da, di. There's lots of moments where I'm falling into the phrases and coming back. That's really important because it shows the judges that you understand how this kind of style of music is written with dynamics. When we get to measure nine, like I said, we're piano but we're really up there with Gs and B flats. Playing up in the high register at a soft dynamic is very tough. So we have to go back to what we were talking about earlier, making sure we have stayed nice and relaxed in our embouchure and we have that nice fast wind pressure. We just don't want it to feel like we're using too much air, like that'll get us a big forte fortissimo sound. So same wind pressure, just a little bit less air going through the horn. That'll help us get a beautiful sound and center each of those high notes at a nice piano dynamic. Other two dynamics I want us to make sure we're paying close attention to. In measure 12, we have a crescendo up to mezzo forte. And then a few bars later in measure 16, we have another crescendo that goes up to mezzo forte. Since those are relatively similar lines, we wanna make sure we're differentiating them and having contrast. So what I like to do is grow to a nice comfortable mezzo forte in measure 12 on the high F, E natural. And then when we go four bars later, crescendo even more, mezzo forte plus, maybe even forte. I know it's marked mezzo forte, but if we can show the judges that we're contrasting those two different mezzo fortes, they'll understand that we're musically engaged in the etude. Finally, we de crescendo uh, to mezzo piano on the very last measure, de crescendo to piano, and then we have a fermata B flat. So feel free to let that B flat taper off into nothing, more like a pianissimo or niente at the very end. That'll sound a lot nicer than just holding the note at piano and cutting off. Da di da di da di. It sounds a bit nicer and a bit more relaxing than da di da di da di. It sounds kind of abrupt. So yeah, feel free to taper off, add a lot of vibrato on the end, and just play very beautifully and musically. And to that point of vibrato that I just made, feel free to use vibrato anywhere in this etude, specifically when you're above the staff, like in moments earlier in measure seven and measure eight. When you're in those high, that high register, B flat, A, you can feel free to use lots of vibrato. Uh, when you get to lower notes, like before measure seven and you know measure 14, when we're in that lower range, you don't wanna use as much because it's a lower uh, tone on the horn and it doesn't sound as great, but you can still use a little bit. Well, I hope this information helps you and best of luck in the audition.